A while ago, I saw this meme. While I am obviously very excited for all the 20s inspirations in fashion that we're about to witness, I'm pretty sure we're also in for a massively stereotypical rendition of the Roaring Twenties. Yes, I mean golden black, feathered bandanas, fringes and beads, high heels and of course tight mini skirts. And 20s fashion was actually so much more. In this series of videos, we're going to have a look at the most memorable trends, silhouettes and designers that made the 20s the 20s. And no, I don't just mean Chanel. So with 20s ahead, let's have a look at the most significant fashion trends of the 20s. We're starting off with a somewhat broad term when it comes to fashion. Day dress. When the year 1920 came, the world of fashion was still dictated by centuries-old rules. One of them being that each activity you perform and each part of the day you go through requires different clothes. Of course, not everyone followed those rules, but it was more than common to change during the day, especially for evening activities. Today we're discussing day wear, so we'll be referring to whatever the ladies wore during the day. Now, if we wanted to be very specific, we could narrow it down to clothes you wore in the morning, or the clothes for particular sports or picnic dresses, or whether it's in the French Riviera or London, but we're not going to do that because this video would be five hours long. 1920s fashion did not come from nowhere. With the expansion of the cities, faster transportation, the suffrage movement and the changes in the clothing industry, women's fashion was undergoing huge changes even before the First World War. There were attempts to ditch corsets for some built-in structures and dresses, there was an introduction of women's pants around 1911, shorter skirts made ankles fashionable again. When the World War came, it didn't revolutionize fashion in a day. All of this was already put in motion by the experiment experimental designers and fashion-forward women of the pre-war world. It's also important to remember that 1920s were literally a decade, and as you know, a lot of stuff can happen in a decade, especially when it comes to fashion. We're going to sum up the most popular trends, but there was much, much more going on. Also, the beginning of the decade looked completely different than the end. Keeping that in mind, here is what was hot in the 20s. <laughs> Contrary to the earlier 20th century, ideal woman's silhouette was quite boxy. Without the support of more structured bodices and corsetry, women's busts were usually unsupported, as long as they were small, medium size. Instead of being pushed up, as it happened before with the corsets, they were actually flattened downwards with the use of fitted chemises and sometimes early versions of soft brass. The bigger the bust size, the more structure had to be used. Corsets with rubber inserts were recommended for plus-size women, both to flatten the chest and shape the tummy. We'll talk about those more in a separate lingerie video. When it comes to the waist, it went from being gathered slightly below the natural waist level in the early 1920s to almost hitting the hips in the second half of the 20s, only to start being accentuated again at the very end of the decade, which was a sort of a prelude to the 1930s fashion. Dresses also transformed with time. They went from being quite loose and long, almost hitting ankles at the beginning of the decade, to more fitted designs barely covering ladies' knees in the latter half of the 1920s. Now here is something super important. Bare knees were a no-no. Despite what you see in modern period dramas or 1950s musicals set in the 20s, you wouldn't usually expose your knees more than literally the lower edge of your kneecap, especially that we're talking day fashion. It wasn't really acceptable in the evening wear either, unless we're talking dancers or performers. There were of course some exceptions. Continuing the Victorian tradition, young girls and teenagers were allowed to show a little bit of knee. Knees were also visible in some sportswear and beachwear. Design-wise, women's day dresses would be quite simple compared to those worn by their Edwardian or Victorian ancestors. Most of the decoration would be made of fabric, either the same that was used to make a dress or, especially in the later 20s, a contrasting fabric. Decoration could include ruffles, collars, bows, inserts, embroidery. The first half of the 20s was known for oriental-style decorations, such as golden appliques on black fabric, while the second is often remembered for more geometrical takes on decoration. Colors went from more muted and rich in the early 20s to more vibrant and pastel in the later years, but that was also often dictated by the time of the year. Traditionally, ladies would wear darker and muted colors during winter and white or pastels in summer. Dresses weren't, of course, the only thing that women wore. A very popular and practical choice was a blouse and a skirt combo, often topped up by a matching jacket. This was recommended for active and working women and often allowed some menswear inspiration, particularly visible in the styles worn from 1927 onwards. 
Vests and waistcoats were also massively popular at the time. It was also about that time that women started cutting their hair short more often, which obviously sparked a huge debate. We'll discuss that more in a hair and makeup video. During colder months, women would wear loose coats. In the earlier years, coats would resemble those worn by men and usually featured a belt below the waist. Later, a simpler, almost oval-shaped wrap style was introduced. Fur coats and fur elements such as tall fur collars or fur cuffs were a very popular decoration. While pants were mostly acceptable at the time as a practical sportswear and workwear, there wasn't really a place for them in the day wear. After several attempts to make pants fashionable, the designers just gave up and decided to put this controversial trend aside. The closest women got to wearing pants during the day was when they went on their holiday by the seaside. A common 1920s beachwear and seaside resort outfit consisted of so-called beach pajamas, which was basically a pair of wide-legged pants. While already a trend in the 20s, it wasn't until 1930s that beach pajamas completely took over summer fashion. So which designers and which names influenced the 20s day wear fashion? Paul Poiret, who was already a big name before the war, was mostly known for his creative approach to evening wear. But he also had a huge part in making the Orient great again, if you know what I mean. Female designers were also highly valued for their modern approach to fashion. Jean Pate was promoting an active lifestyle that required sporty clothes. And it's worth noting that at the time, sportswear didn't refer to clothes worn while doing sports, but clothes worn during an active day, running around the city, doing errands, etc. Madeleine Vilnay was well known for her inventive light designs. Jean Lanvin added a touch of fairy tale and mystery to women's clothes, and finally, yes, you're all waiting for it, Coco Chanel. Your brain is probably screaming little black dress right now, but the truth is, simple black day dresses have been worn way before 1920s and way before Chanel's famous 1926 design. What she did come up with herself, though, was a unique approach to fashion as a modern woman outlet for expressing her confidence and personality. So she wasn't the first one to design a little black dress, but she was the first one to sell it. A 1920s outfit would not be complete without a series of accessories. When it comes to day wear, those would be usually limited to a hat, a small bag, a pair of gloves and maybe some subtle jewelry. Hats from the beginning of the decade were often quite wide, with the brim faced downwards. Mid-twenties hats continued this trend, with the brims turned towards the face, almost like bonnets. It wasn't until later in the decade where the most iconic twenties hat, a cloche hat, would gain enormous popularity. By the end of the decade, literally every lady owned a cloche hat, and this trend continued until the early thirties. Shoes did indeed have heels, but most of them weren't extremely high. The heels were always a bit curved and the bottom wasn't the thinnest part of the heel. Also, no stilettos. These are the biggest day wear trends that can be found in 1920s fashion. Again, remember that each year new trends appeared and another trends faded. And if you're going for an authentic 20s day wear silhouette, it's best to narrow down your look to either early 20s or late 20s. Also remember the following. Don't accentuate the waist. Keep the chest flat, you can just go for a braless look. Keep your knees covered and don't wear high heels. For the best effect, Google original images from the time you're looking for and look for trends and looks that repeat through the images. Good luck and see you in the next episode.